Okay, so here's a nice um, SLAI modeling question, uh, quite a tricky one, um, voted for by the class as one of the harder ones, and so why not just do a video, and then we'll do some more review in class. Um, so let's have a little look. Uh, the, the S is on the y-axis, S is the uh, average savings in thousands of dollars, so I'm just going to pop that on there, this is in thousands of dollars. Uh, and the x-axis is t, the number of years after graduating. So this is number of years uh, after graduating. It's always nice to put the labels on the graph so you can keep referring to it. Um, and now I think I've, I've pretty much used all of that information right from the question, so I don't need to look back at that specific uh, feature. Uh, now let's have a look. Write down one feature of this graph which suggests a cubic function might be appropriate. Well, look, a, a quadratic has one turning point, either like this or like this. And the feature of a cubic is it has two turning points. So that's definitely a good thing. So basically, we say that we have two turning points, and therefore a cubic is definitely a good model for it. Okay? Um, and now it gives you the equation of the cubic, but with some missing bits, right? So the a, the b, the c, and the d. Now, if you go back to your most basic model, y equals mx plus c, so the missing parameters are the m and the c. We usually find those by finding the gradient and then maybe plugging in an xy number, a xy pair of coordinates on the model, and then we find the c. Well, this is the same. It's exactly the same, um, but it's just a little bit harder, right? <laughs> of course, it's a bit harder. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to write down the model at the bottom, s equals a t cubed plus b t squared plus c times t plus d. And basically, all we're going to do is we're going to substitute in pairs of t s numbers, you know, x, y coordinates. So I'm going to get four equations here, all right? So I'm just going to number these 1, 2, 3, and 4. So on the side here, I'm just going to type 1. And I'm going to substitute t equals 0 and s equals negative 5. So negative 5 equals a times 0 cubed plus b times 0 squared plus c times 0 plus d. And can you see what happens? Yep, negative 5 equals all these guys are just 0. So negative 5 equals d. So that's why b part 1 just says write down the value of d. All right. So d actually is, in fact, the y-intercept, and negative 5 is this cheeky little number here. All right, so we found d. Uh, part 2. Write down three simultaneous equations for a, b, and c. So hopefully you can see where we're going with this now. Look, we've got one pair of values, two, three. So we just go ahead and substitute these in um, slowly, slowly. So let's create equation 2 here. Equation 3 here, and equation 4 here, and those are our three blue equations, all right? So um, s equals a t cubed. So let's go ahead and substitute in. So s is 3 for this one. s is negative 1 for this one. s is negative 5 for this one. And go back to um, this one here. Um, the t is 1 here, so a times 1 cubed plus b times 1 squared plus c times 1, and now plus d. Now, d is, remember, we've already worked out as negative 5. Uh, the next one, number 3. So you can see that t is 2 this time. So t is 2, a times 2 cubed, plus b times 2 squared, plus c times 2, minus 5. And let's go to the uh, number 4 equation. That's a t equals 3, a times 3 cubed, plus b times 3 squared, plus c times 3 minus 5. Now what we've got here is um, we've got hence or otherwise, look at this part 3, Let's find the values. Well look, we've got simultaneous equations, we've got three equations with three unknowns, so we immediately switch to our calculator. Now it's not n-solve, n-solve is just for one equation. Um, so let's get back out here, let's go to menu, algebra, and can you see, solve system of linear equations. All right, linear equations, A's, B's, and C's. And there are three equations, and you might as well just change this to A, B, and C, right? Um, a, comma, 
b comma c because then it matches exactly the equations we've got now if we want we can tidy up the equations because we had one cubes and two cubes and three cubes or we can just leave it exactly as it is right so i'm just looking at my screen now you can obviously write these down and try it so i've got three equals to a times one cubed well one cubed is one plus b times one squared plus c times one minus five all right and the second equation i've got is negative one equals a times two cubed so i'm just going to put i'm going to put the um the expanded form so two cubed is eight plus b times four uh, plus c times two minus five i'm going to do the same for the last one which is going to be working out in my head i've got uh negative five equals and here i've got a times three cubed which is 27 plus b times three squared which is nine uh, plus c times three and that is minus five so i think i've got them all typed in boom and that's it look a equals two b equals negative 12 and c equals negative 18. so let's just go ahead and transfer those to our ipad solutions let me just maybe put this side by side and so i can read my ti inspire and grab hold of it make it a little bit bigger okay so at the bottom of this page i'm going to put the answers a equals let me just calculator view zoom make it a bit smaller there we go so a equals 2 uh, b equals negative 12 c equals 18 so i'm going to write out the whole function now s and s remember represents the thousands of dollars of debt right the thousands of dollars of debt yep perfect um, oh sorry the average savings my bad Thousands of dollars of savings. I should really have put that up here. It's thousands of dollars of savings. How much savings do you have? I suppose a negative amount of savings is, means you're in debt, right? So S equals um, A times T cubed plus B times T squared plus C times T plus D. So there, there's our model, right? There's our model. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to use that model because can you see part D? Uh, sorry, part C. Part C here says use the model. So use the model. So let, let's not even read the next part. Let me go back to my TI Inspire. Now I'm going to put in, let me just get a better view for that. Uh, view, zoom, 250. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me go put in a graph. And I'm going to type this in. F1 of X is 2 times by x to the power of 3 minus 12 times x squared plus 18 times x minus 5. Great. Okay, it look, looks pretty good like that, all right? We can see it quite clearly on the screen. Remember, control T is always a nice feature. Um, it gives us a nice feel for how the numbers are increasing so certainly by the time we get to four and five we've got lots of positive saving you know those times when we've got negative savings means we're obviously in debt and when zero zero years after graduating it says we've got negative five we've got negative five thousand savings so that must be the debt maybe that a student loans to pay off all right so now let's go back to the ipad to find out what is the question asking so the question is, use the model to determine the total length of time in years for which a graduate is, <laughs> let me just delete that little bit that I've covered up, is expected to be in debt after graduating. So in terms of the picture on the question, you can actually see that there's two sections, isn't there, where we're negative. We've got this section, so this amount of time, and we've got this section okay so basically we're going to find this length of time right because this is the number of years and we've got to find this length of time so that clearly coincides with the zeros of the function so we go back to our ti inspire and the th what we really need to do definitely i'll just take off the table of values Control t menu 
analyze the zeros. Click, click, menu, analyze, zeros, click, click, and menu, analyze, zeros, click, click, and then go and grab the zeros, just move them around so you can see them basically. So there you go, you've got uh, 0 0.36 years, or 0 0.358, three sig fig, uh, 1.83 and 3.81. Let's just toggle that again, just so we can get back to the iPad. And then just have a little bit at the bottom here. So we've got T equals uh, 0 0.358 years. Then we've got t equals 1.83 years, and t equals, let me just click on here, and uh, make this a little bit bigger, uh, 3.81. Right, t equals 3.81. Okay, so this is 0 0.358 years for the first little section, and now we want the difference between these guys, right? And you can just do it in your calculator as a subtraction, I think that's uh, 1.98 years, right? Yeah, that looks good. So the total number of years that this graduates are in debt is the 1.98 plus the 0 0.358. And again, it's a calculator job. I'll just try doing it old school. 8 plus 5 is 13. 9, 10, 13, 1, 2. So 2.338, it's 2.34 years. That's the average amount of time that we'd expect a university graduate to be in debt. Hope that helps.